I thought he was my hero, but I found his secret and now I don't know who he is. I grew up idolizing my older cousin, Jack. He was the golden child of our family, always succeeding in school, sports, and life in general. Everyone thought he had the perfect life. He was the kind of person people looked up to, and I, especially, thought of him as my personal hero. But everything changed the day I found something in his room that made me question everything I knew about him. It happened one evening when I stayed over at Jack's place. We had been catching up, talking about old times, when he left the room to answer a call. I was bored, so I decided to look around for something to do. That's when I noticed the drawer in his desk was slightly open. Curiosity got the better of me, and I pulled it all the way out. What I found inside made my blood run cold. It wasn't just some old papers or keepsakes. It was a folder full of documents, pictures, names, addresses, and notes. The notes were the most chilling. They were about people, people I knew, people in our family, friends, and even strangers. The notes detailed their habits, where they worked, where they lived, and even who they were close to. There was something eerie about the precision of the information. This wasn't just casual information, it was meticulously gathered. I pulled out one of the pages, and my heart sank when I saw the name at the top, my best friend, Emily. The note was filled with details I knew only Emily would have shared with Jack. But why would Jack need all of this? My hands trembled as I turned the page, and I found similar files on other people in our family, too. But one thing stood out above everything else, Jack had been keeping track of all of us. I didn't understand. Why would Jack, someone I thought I knew better than anyone, be keeping files on the people closest to him? I couldn't sit still. My mind was racing with questions, none of which made sense. I tried to calm myself down. Maybe there was an explanation. But before I could process any of it, Jack walked back into the room. His face turned pale when he saw what I was holding. I had to act fast. Part 2. What the hell are you doing with that? Jack's voice was sharp, almost panicked. I felt a knot tighten in my stomach. I dropped the papers in shock, my heart pounding. I didn't know what to say. The smile that usually lit up Jack's face was gone, replaced by an expression I had never seen before it's serious, calculating, and cold. He closed the drawer slowly, his eyes never leaving mine. Jack, what is all this? I asked, my voice barely above a whisper. Why are you keeping track of all these people? For a moment, he didn't answer. He just stood there, looking at me with an unreadable expression. I had always looked up to Jack, but now, the distance between us felt like a canyon. I couldn't recognize him anymore. Finally, Jack took a deep breath and sat down across from me. This isn't what you think, he said. It's, for protection. Protection? What are you talking about? I demanded, my voice rising. This isn't just some protective measure. You've been spying on people. People we know. People I know. Jack's face hardened, and I could see the weight of his secrets pressing down on him. He looked down at his hands, avoiding my gaze. It's a long story, he said quietly. A dangerous one. But if you want to know, I'll tell you. I didn't know what to say. My mind was a blur of confusion and fear. But I wanted to know the truth. I needed to. Part 3. Jack leaned forward, his voice low. I've been working for a private organization for a few years now. We deal with threats, people who pose a danger to others. The files are all part of a bigger operation. It's a job, but it's dangerous. Sometimes we have to gather intel on people in case they become threats. But these are people you know, Jack, I interrupted, my voice shaking. Why would you be spying on your own family and friends? Why are you tracking them? Jack looked at me, his eyes filled with regret. Because sometimes, the people closest to you can become dangerous. And when that happens, we have to be prepared. I never wanted you to know about this. I didn't want to put you in danger. I was speechless. The Jack I knew, the Jack I had grown up with, was gone. In his place was someone I didn't understand. 
I wanted to believe him, but the truth felt like a punch to the gut. My cousin had been living in a world I had no idea existed. You're telling me you've been following people's every move, gathering information on us? I said, my voice a mixture of disbelief and anger. How can I trust you after this? Jack's face softened, and he stood up. I never wanted this to affect you. I never wanted you to know what I do. But now that you do, you have to understand, I didn't choose this. It's just the job. Part 4 For days after that conversation, I couldn't look at Jack the same way. Every time I saw him, I remembered the files, the secrets, the lies. The truth was, I didn't know who Jack was anymore. He was still my cousin, but the person I had grown up with seemed like a stranger. I tried to pretend everything was normal, but the tension was always there. Jack kept his distance, never pushing me to understand his side of things, but I could see the guilt in his eyes. Then, one night, I got a call. It was from Emily, my best friend, the one whose information Jack had been keeping track of. She sounded frantic. Hey, I don't know how to say this, but, someone's been asking about me. They know things about me, about my life. I'm scared. My heart dropped. I knew exactly what she was talking about. I couldn't shake the feeling that Jack's job was more dangerous than he had let on. And now, my best friend was caught in the middle of it. The following weeks were a blur. Jack's world was closing in on me, and I realized that there was no escaping it. The organization he worked for was more dangerous than I had ever imagined, and now I was a part of it whether I liked it or not. I confronted Jack one last time. I don't know if I can be a part of this anymore. I don't know who you are anymore. Jack just looked at me, his expression unreadable. I'm still the person you knew. But this is my life now. And if you want to stay safe, you need to stay away from this.